Hi guys and welcome back. Today, this piece that I'm working on went through a an almost complete tragedy, but I was able to fix it. And I'm gonna talk a bit about that, about the, the journey that this painting took and the things that I did to fix this this horrible thing that happened to it. And maybe it'll give you guys some ideas for fixing issues or mistakes in your own watercolors. I would love to do a video in the future about resolving issues or mistakes overall, just lots of different mistakes and lots of different solutions. So let me know if there's any specific product products, problems that you run into when you are watercoloring. But today, this painting, it, uh, it got some, some collaboration with my toddler, <laughs> which was a nightmare. I, so the story, the story is very short, but I was sitting there painting. He was in the studio with me and I was actively looking at my painting, working on it. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a nice, decently sized brush sweep across my painting. He had come up and gotten one of my <laughs> larger brushes and dipped it in a pot of red paint and swiped it across the painting right in front of my eyes while I was working on it. I don't know how I didn't see him coming up, but it, uh, it did, it happened. I would have thought that a piece would have gotten ruined because I walked away and wasn't watching it, but no, <laughs> apparently it can happen anytime, so I need to be more vigilant. But it, uh, it panicked me. I actually, I only got part of it filmed of the mistake of the issue of that, that brush stroke that he put on my painting because immediately in the moment, I just went into autopilot to try to fix it. I didn't have my camera rolling, so I didn't actually catch the full, the full mistake. I wish that I had it because it was, it was pretty, pretty shocking, <laughs> but eventually you'll see kind of the path of the stroke that he took. So I was very lucky in the way that he did do it. So I happened to be halfway done with the piece basically. So some of the areas that he hit with it, I hadn't even started yet and other areas I was currently working on. It was only right on her shoulder that I had actually finished it. So that, that was lucky because it meant that I would be able to adapt as I was painting it to the paint that he put down. So the first thing that I did before I, I even started filming it was that I, I patched up the background. So I find that when there's an issue or a mistake, I will, I will analyze what it needs the most to bring it back into comfortable level. So what can I do to make it feel like it's actually salvageable? A lot of times I will make mistakes that just feel so irreparably damaged that I, I can't bring it back. It's just broken and the only chance is to start over and it is so demoralizing to be in that position. So I, I like to look for the thing that feels like it can bring it back the quickest. So this painting, Jet Black, is available at my shop. I am actually really, really happy with how it turned out. I had this huge thing to fix and work around, and in the end, I actually think that I ended up with a stronger painting, and I love it. I love how it turned out. So again, that link is down in the description if you'd like to get yourself an original painting. Now the next part is color correcting it. This can change obviously depending on the piece that you're working on and what happens and but th this is very specific if you accidentally get paint or you did a wash that you're unhappy with onto a piece so so for for this piece i had mostly blues with a little bit of quinacridone red i believe it was either quinacridone red or rose they're very similar so it's a it's a very cool red color and this this streak of paint it was very warm. I, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it's a warm red, so it did not immediately mesh with what I already had. But because I had already introduced some some reds, some warms, it, it gave me a bridge to work through that. So what I did was I incorporated some more of that same red paint into the ends of her hair on the bottom part of the painting, and then I let it fade out as it got closer to her face. So I knew that the overall feel that I wanted for this piece is that I wanted her to feel ghostly and very cool based. I wanted her skin to feel really cool still. I used almost entirely blues for her skin. So 
So I decided to let the red be a little bit of an accent that faded in and then that that core focal point of her face stayed true to my original vision. So, so again, I brought some of that mistake red and incorporated it more into her hair in different places so it looks intentional. And, and that was also, again, very convenient that I was only about halfway done with the hair at that point. I'd had that base layer so I could add in that red. And then as I worked on the shadows, I can incorporate it and make sure that it just meshed really well. So fixing the skin was the most delicate part of fixing this issue. It was the place it was done completely. It was also the coolest. I kept it mostly blue. So I, I wanted to leave it till the very end so that I could give myself time to think about how to resolve it. So one of the options that I saw right away is I could actually take that red color and glaze over the rest of her skin so that it would completely match. And looking at it, I actually, I was really interested and I really liked the effect that it had. It looked really cool layered on top of the blue that I had that I was using. It was actually ultramarine blue. So I loved the look of it, but ultimately I decided that it would be better to stick to my original vision of the piece to keep it very ghost-like and blue for her skin. So the solution to that was I needed to patch it up as best as I could with the white gouache. So I actually did end up leaving the the main color of her skin and the highlights, the paper white color. So I went in with my gouache and I just very carefully layered it with very thin layers over a, a lot of layers so that it would build up and create a more opaque coverage of that red. And I did it that way because I wanted to keep the paint from looking cakey. And one of the ways that can help with that is to create multiple washes with the gouache. So I thin it down a little bit more and then I just layer it on top of each other until I get to the, the opacity that I'm looking for. So that resolved that actually. And because I had done a lot of thinner layers on top of each other, I could feather them out into the rest of the skin so that it created basically a gradient between that paper white color and the white as i mentioned earlier since they don't match perfectly and that helped resolve it so that there wasn't like a stark line between the two there was still a little bit of that red showing through and i decided to to lean into that a little bit so part of the skin that i wasn't sure how to resolve was actually on her tattoo. And this is another part that was actually really kind of lucky in a way, is that the way that he he put that stroke down, it actually followed exactly one of the lines in her tattoos. So it allowed me to break it down piece by piece with how I wanted to gradiate that. So that is why I ended up deciding is that because it was a layered wash to create that look, and then it had that warm red on top, I would have to completely paint over it with gouache or make it much darker. And I, I didn't want either of those options. So I took that red and I created a bit of a gradient as it went up the tattoo towards her face. Overall, I feel like really the takeaway is when you're trying to fix a mistake or an accident like mine, the, the best thing that you can do is just to give yourself a chance to calm down and not just react and give yourself a plan of attack. Analyze what you need to do to fix each section of the painting and what overall do you want for your painting? Do you want or need to bring it back to that original vision or can you course correct and shift the colors so that you're really happy with it still but it also resolves this issue? And another step to it too is analyzing whether, whether it is worth fixing it. I, I tend to be someone who prefers to do the best I can to try to fix something before I give up on it and let it go. But there is also a point on a painting where it just makes more sense to start over and be able to work on it fresh. And that's that's often something that I do end up doing. So, so taking that into account, giving yourself a battle plan, figuring out a very strategic way to approach it can really make the difference when it comes to to fixing things like this. After that first initial shock and panic of painting the background and fixing that part of it, I actually really enjoyed the challenge of finding ways to 
fix this and tweak it and it did it gave me a new way to look at the piece and a new a new trajectory on how to incorporate colors into it so it it shook things up for sure and i i did enjoy it which was interesting so so yeah i think just being able to go with the flow sometimes especially with watercolors and and just enjoy the process is something that i need to do more myself <laughs> So this painting, Jet Black, is available at my shop. If you'd like to get the original, there is a link down in the description that'll take you over there. I, I really actually did love how this one turned out. I, I'm i actually happy that, that that accident happened because it helped me to look at it in a different way and it was a lot more engaging to work on it and fix that issue. So I'm, I'm so happy with it. I love it. But again, she is looking for a new home. So there's that link in the description. and. Stay tuned probably for my next video. I will be talking about the completion of my tarot deck projects. So if you want to hear some of the details about that, about the Kickstarter that I will be running very soon and more information about the product itself and the extra products that'll be part of the Kickstarter, stay tuned, hopefully for the next video. I think it'll be the next video, but that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all of my incredible patrons over on Patreon. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you guys next time in the next video.